In this video, we're going to define five properties that a relation may or may not have. Future videos will involve us talking about special relations that have various combinations of these properties, like equivalences and orders. If R is a relation on X, R is reflexive if every element of X is related to itself. Inversely, R is anti-reflexive if no element of X is related to itself. Consider this example, where X is the set A, B, C, D. R1 is the relation that relates A to itself and B, B to itself and C, C to itself and D, and D to itself. R1 is reflexive because all four elements of X are related to themselves. We have AA, BB, CC, and DD. R is not anti-reflexive because it is not true that no elements of X are related to themselves. The relation R2 relates B to A and to D, C to D, and D to A. R2 is anti-reflexive and not reflexive. R3 relates A to itself, B to A in itself, and C to D. Because R3 contains some of these diagonal pairs, is what they're called, but not all of them, R3 is neither reflexive nor anti-reflexive. R is symmetric if every element if every pair in the relation may be what we call inverted. In other words, if xy is in the relation, so is the pair yx. R is anti-symmetric if no pairs can be inverted. Well, that's not quite true, because some pairs can be inverted no matter what. If we have a pair that has the same component in both the first and second position, that pair can always be inverted. So we say that a relation is anti-symmetric if the only pairs that can be inverted are the pairs that are on the diagonal, such as pairs of the form xx. In this example, we're going to use directed graphs to get the point across instead of sets of ordered pairs. So R1 is the relation that relates A to B and B to A, C to B and B to C, and D to itself. Remember that diagonal pairs such as DD can always be inverted, so we're okay there. We have A, B, and B, A, and we have B, C, and C, B. So R1 is an example of a symmetric relation. And it is not anti-symmetric because we have non-diagonal pairs that can be inverted. R2 is the relation that relates A to B, B to C, C to D, and B to itself. This relation is anti-symmetric because it has no invertible pairs except for the pair B comma B. So for example, we're missing B A, C B, and D C. None of those pairs are present, and they would all need to be there for this to be a symmetric relation. The relation R3 relates A to B, D to B, C to B, and B back to C. This relation contains some anti-symmetric pairs, such as AB, and it also contains some symmetric pairs, such as BC and CB. So for that reason, it is neither symmetric nor anti-symmetric. Finally, we say that R is transitive if any time X is related to Y and Y is related to Z, that means that X is related to Z. You've seen this before with both equality and logical implication. Another useful definition of transitivity is that if the sequence x1, x2, dot, 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 xn plus 1 is a walk in R, meaning that each successive term in the sequence is related to the next one, R is transitive if the endpoints of the walk are also in the relation. And that's true for all of the walks in the relation. For example, let's suppose we have a walk x1 to x2 to x3 to x4 then we will also need the pairs x1, x3, and x2, x4, and we will also need the pair x1, x4. So now as pictured, this thing is transitive. 
Here's an example of four different relations on the set ABC. The first is the relation that takes A to B and B to C. This relation is not transitive because it is missing the edge from A to C. For that same reason, R2 is transitive because we can get from A to B and from B to C, so therefore we should have A related to C. The relation R3 might look transitive at first. We can go from A to B, we can go from B to C, and we can go from A to C, so that pair should be there. We can go from B to A and from A to C, but we also have the edge from B to C, so that's okay as well. However, notice that we have a relation from A to B and from B back to A, so we should have a loop from A to itself if we're going to satisfy the definition of transitivity, likewise with the loop from B to itself. So anytime you have a pair of symmetric edges, you need to also have the loops at the ends of that particular symmetry in order to be transitive. So R3 is not transitive as well. Finally, R4 relates A to B and C to B. And it is a naive mistake to look at this and think that there needs to be an edge from A to C or from C to A. However, that would only be true if it were possible to eventually get between A and C. But notice that we can't because the arrows only go toward B. There is no walk that connects A and C. So therefore, these edges are not necessary and this relation is transitive.